Hello and welcome to the devotion for Monday, October the 24th, Unveiled Faces. Now, we're talking about removing masks, about getting down to our authentic self. But there's another reason that we want to be authentic, because when we're not, we don't really portray an accurate picture. We don't, uh, our, there's not congruence between who we are and the image that we are giving forth. Now, it's very interesting. In Scripture, we have a story about Moses. And Moses, when he went up on the mountain and got the Ten Commandments, the law, when he came down after being in the presence of God, the radiance of the presence of God was so powerful that he, his face was radiant. And what happened was the people, it said, could not look steadily upon the face of Moses. I mean, it was so brilliant. And they, Moses put a veil over his face to keep them from being able to see the glory because it was so bright, even though it was fading away. And Paul picks up on that and he goes, I want to tell you something that happened. I want to tell you a, a dynamic. Now, let me read the passage and then I'll give you a little insight into it. In 2 Corinthians 3.12, he says, Therefore, since we have such a hope, we are very bold. We are not like Moses, who put a veil over his face to keep the Israelites from gazing at it while its radiance was fading away. But their minds were made dull, for to this day the same veil remains when the covenant is read. It has not been removed because only in Christ is it taken away. Even to this day, when Moses is read, a veil covers their hearts. But whenever anyone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we, who with unveiled faces all reflect the Lord's glory, are being transformed into His likeness with ever-increasing glory which comes through the Lord, who is the Spirit. Now, here's what he says. Moses went up and got the law. Now, the law was important because the law explained the covenant that God was making with the people. It gave them the Ten Commandments and helped them to understand what the moral code was that they would live by. But it also came with glory. When Moses came down, his face was radiant, and they could, and and but it was, you know, it was like they couldn't steadily look at him because of, of the radiance. So he puts this veil over his face. So instead of seeing the glory of the Lord and the Ten Commandments, they got the Ten Commandments. Now let me explain something. If all we get is law, and we don't get the glory with it. We have missed the best part. He said, even today, even to this very day, he says, when the law is read, a veil covers their heart. They can't see the glory of God. It's all about what I do and what I don't do. And am I doing it right? Am I doing it in the right way? And how is this fun? They got the rules, but they didn't get the glory, the excitement, the power, the passion. They didn't get the stuff that was the most important. And quite honestly, most of us don't want to have unveiled faces. We don't want to let the true light shine because many people are offended by it. Many people get their, you know, kind of thing because they go, you know, you, you know it convicts. It, it creates a place where they, they have to be accountable. You know, for the longest time, I wanted to put a veil over my face when I worked at the fifth quarter, you know, working with a lot of people that didn't go to church anywhere. And, and, and I would walk in and they would stop telling jokes or someone would say something. Another person would go, you know, you shouldn't say that in front of John. He's going to be a preacher. And I thought, you know, that, that's so uncomfortable. I don't want that to happen. I, you know, maybe if I could just do something, go, oh, no, go on, tell a dirty joke. You know, go on and do that. You know, don't do that just because of me. What I realized is there is a place when, if I'm not intending anything, but because of my relationship with God, being honest about that, being open, not being condescending, not being judgmental, not being critical, they weren't doing that out of guilt or out of, uh, uh, of anything that was negative. They were doing that out of respect. They saw something different. They saw the glory of the Lord. And so it wasn't just you ought to do this or you ought not to do this. It's we don't want to do it 
because we recognize the relationship that we have with John. And we wouldn't want to offend him because we value that relationship so much. And I realized being open, having my face, as it, figuratively speaking, unveiled, saying this is who I am and this is why I live the way that I do and this is the values that I walk with actually caused other people to be convicted of their own life. I didn't do it. They just said, I, I, I'm, I'm not sure I want to publicize that about me. I would rather be more like John. And that's what law by itself kills. Paul says it all the time. He goes, if all we get is rules, there's no life in that. He goes, it has to be the glory. And that's really what makes the difference. That's the reason I'm sharing with you. We need to be people of unveiled faces. They don't just know, they don't, uh, people don't just need to see us and go, they're a Christian, they keep a bunch of rules. They need to go, there's life there. There is life transforming power. They have a joy, they have a peace, they have a, a love for other people that just isn't natural. And there's something about it that is intriguing. There's something about it that is uh, very powerful. I want part of that. Whatever it is you've got, I want some of that. I want to know what makes you tick. When healthy boundaries come with incredible joy and glory, it's no longer a burden. That's the reason Paul said we need to be bold. We need to be people who don't wear masks, who have unveiled faces, who reflect God's glory. Because other than that, it's just rules. It's just laws. And rules and laws don't give life, and they don't give freedom. What gives life and freedom is the incredible life-giving power of God. So we need to be people of unveiled faces so that they see our good deeds, or they see our moral uh, values or those things that we have, and they see those. But what they see is a joy and a passion along with it, the glory along with the law. Let's pray. Father, Lord, it is so easy to just be about right and wrong, good and bad, and not be about just reflecting your glory, the joy, the exuberance, the life that you provide to every one of us. And Father, I know that if we uh, truly live with unveiled faces, some people will get convicted about their own life. And Lord, as long uh, I know that as long as we're not uh, trying to do that, uh, if that happens, that's a good thing. And Lord, as we continue to love the way that you did and encourage, that conviction can be a life-changing force in many people. So Lord, I ask that you give us the courage to be bold, to just be honest about who we are and what we do and why we have the values that we have. And Lord, you can use that in very powerful ways if we also have a deep compassion and love and respect for everyone, no matter who they are. Give us that balance and encourage us that we need to be unmasked, people of unveiled faces who reflect your glory, and that you can use that as a tool to bring others to life. We look for you to do that in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I encourage you. As Jesus said, let your light shine. If you've got a light, don't hide it. Let it shine. And I'll see you tomorrow.